such a long video I don't know how long it's going to be because there is a tutorial and some tips on how to make this ottoman slip cover at the end but I just mainly wanted to talk about refreshing your room using textiles and um, I thought you'd enjoy seeing how the process is you can strip your room down completely take everything out of it and just sit there and look at it for a little while because you may notice some things, which is something that I did. I noticed that my room was starting to look a little tired and lived in, and it needed to be refreshed. And then I noticed my ottoman was brand new, which I got last summer. I was um, noticing that it was starting to get a little soiled because of my pets like to lay on it. So that's when I decided I would go ahead and make a slip cover for it. And I'm glad I did because I can just take that off and throw it in the wash when it gets soiled, just like the slip cover on my sofa. The slip cover on my sofa I made a long time ago out of IKEA remnants of old slip covers. So parts of it I kept, like the arms, and was able to modify it to use it on this sofa that was given to me um, a long time ago, the old Chippendale sofa. So I also like to show you a little bit of how I, after I got this sofa, I had it reupholstered in a sailboat fabric. It was kind of a designing whim. I had three fabrics. I wanted nail head trim and I had an upholsterer do it with a bench cushion, which is a continuous cushion all the way across. And it really uh, made it nice, but I like to protect that fabric and um, use the slip cover most of the year and it seems to be holding up very well. I've had that sofa for, I would say, more than 10 years now, and it still looks almost brand new, and everybody loves it. Everybody loves to take naps on it, so I made a pillow that serves not only as a lumbar pillow, but also as a pillow that you can lay down on and take a nap if you want to, and I can't, I can't tell you how many people in my family have taken naps on that sofa. Um, because it has that nice deep cushion. I've always loved this fabric and I'm planning on painting my accent wall again. So I decided to make some pillows first thing, get her done. I tried a zipper, but decided to go with an envelope back. It was much better with this stretchy velvet. The next thing to do is just take everything off the shelves, off the tables, Remove your slip covers if you have them. Get everything out of the room except for the basics. Keep the furniture, the lamps, the tables, and take a look at it with a different viewpoint. notice this chair this is a chair that I've also done a slip cover on with the Bosphorus fabric and I did a flange um, in in the green velvet to pipe it with I didn't have I didn't want to use piping so I just made I've made a flat little flange to put in where the piping would go and it's very comfortable but um, it's another you know it's another one of my upgrades to an old piece of furniture that I bought for $25 at a thrift store and it seems to be working well. I've had this one for, whew, I can't even tell you. I don't know, I don't even know. So um, it doesn't cost a lot to do some upgrades with fabric and textiles. And um, you can usually find a, like um, good prices for fabrics. I really like the ticking fabric because it is well, I have a cream, it's brown and cream, which I really like that, those colors. They're kind of a nice neutral that blend in with a lot of things. And because of the, because I did stripes, that's the reason I put them like cross, uh, like checkerboard. That's why I cut it into four pieces. If you don't have checkerboard, if you don't have stripes, 
for your fabrics, then you can always use a print or a solid and you don't, you won't have to cut it into four pieces like that, like I did, but I thought it would make it more, um, reasonable because it wouldn't make it look too long one way and short the other if you know by an optical illusion that's why I put the stripes going different ways and then I had that suede fabric for years I've had most of these fabrics for years and finally I'm getting around to getting them sewn so hope you enjoy the video and that you'll like and subscribe slip covers out of the wash it just looks so bright and pretty and now I'm going to start layering in some accents to bring the room to new life and give it some rhythm and beauty and song. Well, this is the bed pillow I put in, uh, you may remember this fabric. It was in my Thanksgiving video, it was a piece of uh, sample fabric that I had that I've been holding onto it, kind of looks like a tapestry. And I just thought I would put this fur blanket behind it. Because sometimes this sofa is really deep and I like to have a lumbar area. And then these pillows I just backed with some velvet and I put extra large pillow forms in them. So this kind of gives us a new look here. Now we're going to add some other layers. Los Angeles I, I lived in Long Beach for 25 years and um, I was able to go to a show house for where Gene Stapleton it was Gene Stapleton's house in Beverly Hills and um, there were some wonderful designers that had done each room like uh, Barclay Butera and I don't know if it was Kelly Wersler or not but um, I remember one room that I walked through and this is the one thing that impressed me the most in that room was that she had a little piece of china sitting on the table and it was very quaint and it made the room seem so homey. And um, I like to put a dish out with mints or or lozenges as, a, as is the case now since I've been kind of fighting off a cold and um, just having a little vintage dish to display is a wonderful thing. 
Another thing is collecting some old leather books or if you have um, any kind of collections that you want to put out. It's always nice to add something from your collection to your room just to give it more of your personality. If you think you may want to try to make one of these ottoman slip covers, if you have an ottoman that you have um, can give more life, it's probably still a good piece of furniture, but it just needs a little TLC, then you may want to stay till the end and watch my uh, tips and techniques on how to get your ottoman done. It's basically cutting strips and squares. So, um, you know, once you measure your ottoman out, you'll kind of get an idea of, of what to do there, but um, I'll just give you a few tips on how I do it to make it a little bit easier. and you can get it done in one day. So I've made six lengths of my fabric, which is a 54 inch fabric to go around. This is going to be the ruffle. So this is doubled. So this is one piece right here. I've got it hemmed already. Sewing all the pieces together. Then I've got four of these, which is going to be area between the piping. So I'm gonna have piping up here, piping down here and then um, the ruffle below. And then I've got all this cording made. I made six, uh, six lengths of this so, so that it can go around twice. And then this is the piece that I just sewed. And what I've done with this is Top stitched it on both sides of the seam just to reinforce it and make it stronger. So the first thing I'm going to do is just measure this all the way around. I'm just going to stick pins in it like that because I want to close it up. So this is the point where we're going to cut it because what I'm going to do is go back and sew these together. I'll trim this off. I've decided to get all of this and the ruffle sewn first before I add it to the big piece. It's just going to make it a lot easier, less bulk handling of fabric. So the first thing to get these on, you want to line your raw edges up here and you're going to sew with your zipper foot just along this line same line where you did the cording so i'll show you that in a minute i just hold it together i don't i don't pin it Okay, so I did leave extra so that I would make sure I had enough. So now I'm going to do the next side. I'm going to go ahead and trim this end.
And I'll show you another way to finish your, your cord. You can open it up a little bit, cut out some of that cord. And we'll start sewing about here, so about an inch in. And then when we get to the end, we'll stuff the other end of the cord in and it'll be a nice clean finish. Okay, I'm almost to the end. So I'm going to go ahead and trim this just a little bit beyond. And I know my machine is noisy, but um, this is a heavy duty. I'll try to mute the sound or something. Now, when I got get down here, remember we opened this up right here, and we're gonna put that inside. We're just gonna wrap it around. Hope you can see this okay. I'm just going to, maybe I'll cut it a little bit shorter. Not too much. So that I can just wrap this piece around and we'll have a nice, clean finish. And there's our finished piping. Right there. So that's a clean way to do it. That is going to be right up there with salvage to salvage, raw edge to raw edge. Okay, so when I got to the end of my pleat making, this is how I made my pleats. I just folded them over, pinned each one. I had a little fabric left over. So rather than going back to adjust my pleats, I am just going to cut this. Cut that. I'll sew those two pieces together and make an additional pleat. So here's an important tip. Now I'm going to sew right along this edge, but I want to make sure that I'm getting right up next to my cording on this side. So that will make it have a nice clean line and starting to come together. So once it's sewn, then we'll get this sewn onto the big part and we should be done. Okay, so now I've got this all the way around. And what we're going to do is match up our seams here <clears throat> and start pinning this next to the cord. I'm going to sew on this side because I can feel the cord through it. So I'm gonna pin all the way around until I get to the end. And when I get down here, I may have some pleats, like in the corner, right here. Thank you for watching this video i hope you liked it and if you want to learn more about sewing techniques and how to upgrade your home with a little bit of basic sewing skills then um, please come back or like and subscribe and I, I plan on doing more videos where i show you easy ways to upgrade your home with textiles and painting 
and um, other crafty ideas. So if you like doing those kinds of things and you want to be able to upgrade your home on a budget, you can just work in little zones and get it done one day at a time and pretty soon you'll have a home that you just love being in. I just thought I would mention that um, you probably noticed that I have a new kitten here, Daddy. And um, we just recently got him because uh, it was back in November when my buddy Saturn passed away. He passed away quietly. Um, I went to the store one day and I came home and he was had died. So um, we, you know, waited a while before we got another kitten, but it, glad we did because Luna just loves him and it took them a while to warm up to each other but now they're even sleeping in the same bed so it's been good for all of us to have little Teddy here <laughs>